Good morning. I would like to welcome you to the regular public workshop and regular meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Monday, August 2, 2010. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved, Motion Stamey. by Mr. Stamey. Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The first item under the agenda is on SPLOST, and that's going to be an update on SPLOST and non-SPLOST capital projects. Our presenter is Ron Burkhalter, SPLOST Capital Projects Director. Good morning. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. I'll start with Heritage Park. The LED sign at Heritage Park has been erected. The sign will be functional by the end of this week. This is the old jail that's out on a farm out on Highway 155 uh, that we're going to move to Heritage Park. This is the old jail that sat on the square, and the schedule for moving it is on August 23rd. We'll be moving it into Heritage Park. At the Richard Craig Tennis Center, some improvements that we've made there is a new sign on, that you see on the building there. Uh, we put a metal roof on the building and gutters, new windows in the rear of the building, and as you see there's some new millwork on the inside. At Warren Holder Park, we put stairs in going up to the football fields, uh, sidewalk, we fenced the football fields, and we're putting a retaining wall in that goes around the kids' baseball field. This is the architect's rendering of a uh, concession slash storage that we're going to build at Warren Holder that's going to go in between the two football fields. This existing two soccer fields are going to be converted to football. North Mount Carmel, all ten soccer fields have been graded. All the irrigation is in, all the storm drainage is in, and all ten fields have been planted. As you can see, the concession is nearing completion. You still have the metal roof to put on it, some finishes to go on, on the inside. The completion here is contingent upon the grass grow in, but we anticipate the grass growing in by October. We've been fortunate enough to have some good hot weather for the Bermuda grass to grow in. At the Locust Grove Rec Center, the renovation starts today. Uh, after school has started, we're going to put a new athletic floor in the gym in the back or in the right hand side there is going to be the exercise area and again the painting for the building started today. The Fairview Rec Center. The building is close to being 70 percent complete. Uh, you can see the curb and gutter going in. The estimated completion for this has been pushed back a couple of three weeks because of the rock, but the contractor has been working extended hours uh, somewhere around the end of September to the 1st of October is our anticipated completion on it. At the Locust Grove Senior Activity Center, we're doing some minor modifications that will start uh, the Tuesday after Labor Day due to some events being scheduled in the building. Uh, we're doing kitchen modifications for serving senior meals. We're doing minor modifications downtown for putting pool tables in, arts and crafts, room, uh, sinks, and some cabinetry we're going to put in the bottom. Uh, the estimated completion of this is mid-November. The E911 Operation Center, this is the existing RV center that we're going to convert into the new E911 Op Center. This is the proposed facade that we're going to put on the building. Still using the metal skin that's on the existing metal building. This is the floor plan of the building. All I wanted to illustrate here is as you look at the slide, the left one third of the building is for the day-to-day -day e, uh, E911 operations. The right-hand side of the building is an emergency management uh, in case there's a, some catastrophic event in another county. Okay, they would come down here and they'd work out of our facility, which has been a tremendous help with us as we put this budget together and the Don Ash has been able to get federal funds, okay, to 
to help with the uh, FF&E of the furnishings that go in this building. This is the new fire station number nine, which will be located on Rock Quarry Road. Uh, this is the architect's rendering of the building. It's going to be a three bay fire house with the bunk room on the right hand side you see there and on the left hand side will be the common area. This job will be going out to bid the second week of this month. The Fortson Library, except for some minor punch list items, the library staff is moving in today. They're starting to move into the new built, new facility. The, we've contracted out the moving of the books. The book moving will start tomorrow, and they anticipate five days to get all the books moved into the building. And we anticipate a ribbon cutting ceremony after working with the library board sometime in early September. Just an interior shot of all the furnishings that are in the library. The Haven House, we had a groundbreaking on the Haven House last Friday. The clearing and grubbing is complete. This is the architect's rendering of what the building is going to look like when it's completed. And the completion on this building is May of 2011. This is just showing an interior layout of the building where you have the one wing that is all uh, administrative and the other two wings are living spaces. Judicial Center parking deck. The parking deck is complete. Items of work that remain to be done is the landscaping that goes around the building and sidewalks down Lawrenceville Street and around the building, and we anticipate a ribbon cutting on the, the parking deck at the end of this month. The Stockbridge Police Precinct, we're partnering with the City of Stockbridge. This is converting, in the back of the picture there is the existing or the old City Hall, and the completion of this is March 2011. A non swas project that we have going is the transit building. David Williamson was able to obtain funding through the FTA or the Federal Transit Administration for a 5,000 square foot new transit facility that we're going to build between uh, the E911 building and Industrial Boulevard. Another non swas or capital project that we have, again, David was able to secure some funding for a loop shop. Uh, it's a 3,800 square foot pre-engineered building. The uh, rectangle that you see there in the top of the picture is the existing fleet. This is where we're going to build the new transit loop shop. At the Veterans Wall of Honor, we reworked the uh, grand staircase and we added ADA sidewalks to take you down to the MIA POW Memorial. Any questions? Any questions or comments from board members? Comments, uh, it's amazing that we have that many projects going on uh, with the economy the way that it is and uh, I'm proud to see it. Absolutely, and none of this would be possible without those SPLOS dollars. So I'm glad our citizens can see progress being made with their extra penny sales tax. Thank you, Ron. The next item is an update on SPLOS transportation projects. Our presenter is Rocky Romero, SPLOS transportation director. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, bear with me for just a second while I can get this up and running. There we go. Uh, we're going to provide an update, after, like you mentioned, of the SPLOS transportation projects. 
Uh, the first thing I would like to mention is uh, since plus two, we have paved 34 roads. 30 of these roads have been dirt roads. Um, overall, we have improved and paved 41.3 miles of uh, roads. Where we are on right away, we're still acquiring right away on racetrack at 81, Harris Drive at Stair at 42, Rock Quarry Road Bridge over the railroad tracks, Mackey Road, Stothwell Road, Oakland Road, and Furby Road at one, Stair at 155. Projects in design, Campground Road Extension, Rock Quarry Road Bridge over the railroad tracks, Furby Road at one, and Anvil Block, East Atlanta Road at Thurman, Hempel Road at Stair Route 138, and All Highway 3 at Stair Route 81. Projects, we got one project out for bid, the South Bethany Road, uh, from Cohen Road to Philadelphia Road. Uh, the bid opening date is August 18th. So far, we have completed uh, eight projects. Uh, those are on this year, fiscal year, or this year, 2010. Uh, East Lake at Phase 2, Airline Road at Stair Route 20, Bethany Road at Stair Route 81, All Conyers Road at Fly Rock Road, Foster Br Drive Bridge, Collins Way, South Bethany Road from Jackson Street to Price Drive, and uh, Pixville Road at South Ola Signalization Project. And uh, for a grand total of construction of $15.8 million uh, and a total project of 23.3, that includes design right away and construction. Current projects that are in construction are Eagles Landing, Hudson Bridge, McDonough Parkway, which is almost completed, Kiss Ferry Road at 81, King Mill Road at State Route 42, East Atlanta Bridge, Collins Drive, Pulling Road, Rocky Creek Road at Hampton Locust Grove, <coughs> Simpson Mill, East Atlanta Road at Panola, and the cul-de-sac at Leland Cypress uh, Lane, which is part of the East Atlanta and Panola Road. Plus, we've started the resurfacing program with Henry County DOT, and I believe they already finished one project, which is the flipping road. Quickly, I want to show you some pictures where we are, where we were four months ago and where we're at now. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Eagles Landing four months ago. This is the bridge at uh, the Pace Creek this is where we're at now. Uh, all the substructure is completed. Uh, we're working on the superstructure. So here pretty soon we'll be starting pointing the concrete decks. This is another view uh, where you can see the field is, is, has been brought up and uh, GAB or rock has been installed. This is a view on State Route 42 where we have started putting that down, uh, placing the GAB. Uh, the widening on 42 is necessary because we're going to have two lanes, uh, dual lanes, left turn lanes for uh, coming from 42 towards Eagles Landing. This is the bridge over the railroad tracks on Eagles Landing. You can see here the, the beams being, being brought up, placing of the first beam. Here we got four beams set contractor had to wait for that train to go by. We can't do any construction while, while the trains are coming by. This is East Lake four months ago, if you remember this picture. This is East Lake now. Uh, we just had the grand opening last Friday. My understanding there's a lot of traffic on it since then. This is another view of East Lake. <laughs> This is East Lake at State Route 155 four months ago. This is how it looks now. This is another view. Still East Lake. This is Hudson Bridge Road four months ago. Now you can see we have it placed GAB and also curb and gutter, and uh, the drainage structures are in place also. You can see where we have installed the contract, build a wall, a retaining wall, in order to accommodate for the extra lanes on flipping. That's just another view of uh, Hudson Bridge. This is McDonough Parkway four months ago. This is McDonough Parkway now. 
this project is basically completed. Uh, that's the bridge before. That's how it looks now. We just need to do some striping and some cleanup, and we should be ready to open by sometime this month. That's another view. This is a State Route 81 at Bethany four months ago. This project is completed and operational. We've installed left turn and right turn lanes in all quadrants. This next picture is uh, King, uh, State Route 81 at Kiss Ferry. That was four months ago. Now you can see we have included widening it, placed GAB, and uh, if you can see the concrete and steel poles for the signals have been uh, installed. Uh, my understanding is we're going to be paving this this week on for the intersection. That's King Mill 42 four months ago. That's King Mill now. Uh, the grading's been it's 90 percent completed and GAB uh, placement of GAB started. That's another view of King Mill. This is all corners and fly rock four months ago. This is it, how it looks today. We have that uh, intersection improvement, uh, the signal operation last Thursday, and we did the ribbon cutting on Friday. That's another view. Of course, the barrels are not there now. Uh, this is the East Atlanta Bridge, how it used to look. This is during the construction of the temporary bridge. This is just before we turn traffic into the temporary bridge. There's traffic now on, it's been since uh, mid-July, that's when we opened the new temporary bridge for construction of the new one. And on the new bridge, they have already poured the first case on last Friday also, so they're moving along pretty good. This is Collins uh, Drive, grading continues on that job. This is Pulling Road four months ago. That's Pulling Road now. Uh, a lot of the GAB is being placed and a curb and gutter also. Contractor had to pull out for a while because of utility conflicts, but they're back working. This is uh, Simpson Mill Road. They're still working and grading on that, that job. This is South Bethany uh, from uh, Price to uh, from Jackson Street to Price Drive four months ago. That's how it looks now. We just opened, uh, we paved the road early in, in July. That's another view. Right there is a view of the entrance of the Senior Activity Center and the Holder Park entrance also. So the road provides uh, access to, to both facilities. This is all uh, East Atlanta at Panola. You can see where the, where the road is going to be relocated. You can see in the very far back the entrance of the subdivision. Grading continues on that job. This is the college site that uh, at Leland Cypress Lane at the West Panola Inn where our staff engineer Shea did the design and Kenny DOT is doing the construction. This is the signalization uh, that was awarded about two months ago for Pixfield at South Ola and the contractor built the project in the time frame and was ready uh, last uh, Wednesday before school opens. This is the picture of the Rocky Creek at Hampton Locust Grove Road. Uh, contract was awarded in the previous meeting. Notice to proceed is going to be next Monday, August 8th. And that's my presentation. Any questions? Very good presentation. Again, that just um, highlights the um, importance of the SPLOS program here in Henry County. None of those projects would be under construction or completed in the absence of that one penny sales tax. So that's right. the voters are to be commended on, on having enough foresight and vision to, uh, to approve that in 2007. Any board member with a question or comment, Mr. Bowman? I got several comments, Rocky. The uh, East Lake Extension, I was there through there on Sunday morning and Sunday evening. And there was 20, 25 cars both times. I mean, it was it was really packed. I, I, 
for the ones that haven't been down it. It's the I word's know. out and they're using it. I mean, and it's flowing very smoothly. So, uh, and the only other thing, uh, Madam Chair, is I think $61 million. Would that not be a, a record spend for Henry County for transportation? Is that is that getting pretty close, Warren? I guess you're the. We never have had 61 million. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a record. <laughs> For us to have that type of work going on, especially in these times, and uh, and I know it's it's generated generally SPLOS funding. It's a uh, it's a tremendous amount of work, and I tell you, I, I'm, I'm very proud of our SPLOS department, the roads, and our capital improvements uh, because it seems like you guys are on top of it and things are running very smoothly. And just like to congratulate you on that. I, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you, sir. We do have a great staff and. Great support from the board also. Appreciate that. I noticed you any update or information on 81 Lake Dow. Oh, I, yeah, I, I certainly didn't have no pictures on that one, but it's uh, G that awarded the project this, this past July. Uh, construction, they're going to give the notice to proceed mid August, so construction should start late August, 1st of September for CW Matthew. To do the C. work. C.W. Matthews is a contractor. Yes, right? and it's, it's already been awarded. Okay. that already did that. Mm -hmm. A couple of comments. First being, thank you for the signal at South Ole and Peaksville. As we know, school started today, and uh, it was much needed. I know at the ribbon cutting the other day, uh, people would come by blowing the horn mm -hmm. and waving thank you, you know, that kind of thing. So. It was, it was much needed, and, and I want to commend the SPLOS department, and also I think uh, DOT had some input into that, as well as the contractor, to make it happen in a timely manner to where when school started today that, that it would, would be working. And, and this morning, uh, DOT had a, had a staff member there looking at it, to, to check it to see if everything was working properly, and uh, he said it was doing fine. The other thing, and this is just uh, a reminder, on King Mill in 42, uh, and Mike Bush, uh, follow up on this, if we haven't received the $200,000 contribution from Whirlpool to make that happen, we need to, to to remind them that that one is about to come uh, to be complete and that we need our money because that was that was one of the agreements uh, from them to make that contribution due because of the impact that it was going to put on that intersection. So be sure we don't want to let that that's a little bit too big to let it slide. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you again from the projects, and I'm talking about countywide projects, and Commissioner Bowman is exactly right to have this, this amount of projects. And when you combine the capital projects that Mr. Burkhalter has, has shown us, along with the, the road projects, and for people, we're here to be criticized. There's no question about it. People are going to criticize because we didn't get, I didn't get my road or my building or whatever. And, and it, it's to be expected, but when you see the projects that have just been shown to us and you see that they are basically scattered throughout the county, not in one area, um, it may not be what everybody wants, but I don't believe anybody can say we are doing nothing. So I just want to make that comment, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Any other question or comment? Thank you, Rocky. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is under Public Works, an update on county transportation projects. Our presenter is Terry McMickle, Public Works Division Director. Good morning. Well, again, they have all the money, so I'll have to come up here with just a few projects. <laughs> the first project we've got going on uh, is one that's been around for a while. We are now at North Cleveland Church Road. Uh, we will be paving that. Uh, this week we're almost through grading. We'll probably start fine grading or blue topping putting down GAB next week, and then following uh, probably within two to three weeks we'll be placing the pavement on that road. Uh, we've completed a pipe replacement project in Winsong today. We'll be moving over to White Castle 
uh, Commissioner Basler, which is off of uh, Thurman. You were asking me about that the other day. So they'll probably be moving in there today. Um, Rocky had shown earlier where we built a little hammerhead cul-de-sac, the Air Force Floss Project on Leland Cypress, which is part of the um, East Atlanta uh, Panola Project. As we as promised those citizens, we would have that that in. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, will probably get some concrete work started this week on Richard Craig Park. We're uh, in a joint project with, I believe that's Splost in the city of McDonough, paving a parking lot there for the uh, next to the tennis courts. Our concrete work should start in there uh, sometime this week, and then we'll be paving the parking lot shortly thereafter. Another dirt road project on the south of uh, McDonough is on Higgins Road. Uh, the surveyor is should be in there today or tomorrow. Uh, to do that when the surveyor collects all the property pen data and all the right-of-way we will tweak our alignment to try to make minimum impact and as soon as we do that as soon as we get through with North Cleveland Church Road we will be moving to Higgins uh, in addition we have a major pipe replacement project on Fairview Road which will require us to put a little runaround road in in order to replace the pipes on Fairview is two large pipes We'll have to dig the road entirely up, so we uh, currently have two pipes off to the side. We'll build a runaround road around that location, much like Rocky did on, a, on his bridge project. Um, the precast box culverts are to come in in September the 20th. So on August the 20th, we're going to start preparing and switch traffic over uh, on that little runaround road, dig out the other pipes, and be prepared so when they come in on September the 20th, we'll be ready to set them. One other project that we're doing that's kind of a joint venture project is on Tussa Hall. Um, Rocky is again paving Collins Drive, drive um, behind Collins Drive all the way to the Kubahatchee Learning Center. Uh, we'll be working with uh, Henry County Water and Sewer Authority on paving that road as well as doing a little bit of, of paving in there. We're going to try to get our paving done ahead of them so our pavement or our asphalt trucks won't run on that new asphalt that they do. So uh, Mr. Barkley is down there working with them. Uh, he'll be taking the motor grader down there, shaping that road up uh, for paving next week. And hopefully maybe the week after that, if we have it ready, we'll be moving in there. In addition, just very quickly, uh, we, have, we have our pipe replacement program really uh, in full swing now. We're finding a lot of pipes that need to be replaced, uh, but we are currently somehow or another managing to stay up with those, although that's going to be a kind of a stretch in the future for us to do that. So we'll be coming to the board with some recommendations on that. In addition, as Rocky mentioned, we have our uh, paving plan for this year in uh, in operation, I think they've already paid flipping in Red Oak. We'll be continuing that. I believe in August, next meeting we'll be presenting that, middle of August. You'll see a spreadsheet showing all the roads that we'll be paving this year and the cost associated with them and how we've got that set up a little different than what we've been doing, but I think the board will appreciate how we've uh, doing that. Uh, we have some full depth reclamation in that where We've actually found on some of our roads it's by far cheaper to do full depth reclamation instead of patching those roads. We feel like we'll get a much longer uh, surface or better riding surface and uh, the pavement will certainly last a lot longer by doing that. We feel like we've had pretty good success with that and on three roads that we've been a part of, we've had uh, Thurman was done that way and paved and Hearn as well as a section of airlines. So we'll be using that same process on some of our roads this year. We're preparing uh, a contract, hopefully, to, that'll go out this month. We'd like to see that full depth reclamation start on some of these subdivisions and other roads in September and October. Uh, in November, try to get most of that done. We're going to do it in two contracts because uh, we're going to be following right behind them as they do that rec reclamation. So we'll be doing one in the fall and one in the spring. But our, our paving 
goal this year is to get 30 miles. And that will conclude my presentation, unless uh, any of the board members have any questions. Terry, I know you hate following the SPLOST presentation, um, but just to say your department has, it, it probably doesn't get the, the attention and coverage that, that SPLOST gets, but your department is responsible for all the maintenance and all the upkeep of all the roads, including the ones that are done under SPLOST. And, um, you know, we certainly want to thank your department for doing a good job um, of keeping up with all that. It's challenging, especially with the number of dirt roads we have in the county, to continue maintaining those. And, of course, as you discussed, the fact that we have a number of culverts and things like that that are going to need replacing in the future as they've got quite a few years on them. And uh, But you, your, your department does an excellent job, and, and um, we certainly appreciate all that you do to keep our roads in good shape. Well, as Brocky said, we have an excellent staff as well that a lot of our folks have been around for a long, long time and they do a good job. And, and of course, it wouldn't be possible, you know, to do what we do without them, but they do a great job. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bowman had a question. Well, it's more of a comment. I know that uh, I had several, uh, Terry and I had been out several times and looked at various issues around uh, Miller's Mill Road, I, I would say, was one of them. And, I'd like to thank Terry for his response and the way that he's responded to them. And I know we had a few humps and bumps, and we went back and cut those down. And, and I can understand how when you're paving, sometimes you just pave and you go, go across it. But uh, some other issues that have came up, and uh, uh, Terry's been very, very uh, quick to respond. His response time's been good, and I want to issue the same thanks to him and his department that we do to the SPLOS department because it has been, uh, I know for me personally, I can't speak for the other commissioners, but whenever I call Terry and say, can you meet me at such and such a time, if he's got the time to do it, he can. If not, he tells me when he can and he's there. And then he responds to that issue whenever we do it. So once again, it's just another good department that is just doing great work. Anybody Thank you, else? Sir. Mr. Holden. I'd like to echo what Commissioner Bowman said and, and add a couple of things and the fact that when you look at the entire budget and you see what the, the um, percentage of the total budget is uh, allocated to transportation and you see the things that he's talking about doing and paving 30 miles and replacing culverts and replacing uh, pipes uh, and maintaining the roads and if anybody needs help from other departments for mowing and different other things who do they call on they call on DOT and in many cases over the years it's cost us in time actually maintaining and taking care of the roads so my hat's off. Uh, I know there have been some problems that I've talked to Terry about as far as uh, personnel, and, and he has uh, addressed those issues to my satisfaction, maybe not to everyone's, but to mine. And I want to say thank you uh, on, on behalf of the board, um, or myself specifically, that uh, you are in a somewhat of a thankless position because people expect uh, or take for granted that, that this maintenance is going to occur, this pothole is going to be fixed, uh, this pipe, this drainage pipe is going to be opened, uh, when in fact if the money and the personnel is not there, it's not going to happen. Uh, another thing, and this is just a thought, and I'd like to, to pass this along, and I, we've spoken about it before, and he touched on it with, with piping and with various drainage structures and drainage problems. As much pipe as, as this county has put in, either through subdivision curb and gutters from lateral, and I hope I'm using the right term, lateral pipes along ditches over the past 20 years, and some of these are, are starting to see their life expectancy come up. We're going to have to look at alternative um, funding, and I certainly hope that we will look at it, and, and I think we all think that, that stormwater should play a part in some of this, 
And I think it's important because if we don't start preparing now, in the next 20 to 30 years, it's going to, the cost of, of replacing all this pipe is going to break the bank. And uh, I just really wanted to say thank you, Terry, and I want to make one correction to your presentation. Collins Drive in Coobahatchee is not on Tussa Hall. It's on Tullaca. <laughs> but thank you so much. Staying corrected. Mr. Holder, I'll follow up on, on the comment. I had asked Terry last week if he would put together a long-term plan for the county. Um, coming back on the heels of a, a meeting at ARC um, two weeks ago where we talked about the crisis that GDOT is in with its maintenance program and the amount of money that's coming in through the gas tax and the fact that about 80 percent of their budget going forward in the future is going to have to be committed just to maintenance of our roads which leads very little money for any type of system improvements and um, knowing that GDOT's having these issues as we stand right now that's something that we do need to look at as a county going forward with all these new projects especially coming online there's going to be maintenance associated with them 20 30 years down the road so now is the time to start preparing a plan for that and Terry's um, going to take a good look at that come with a comprehensive plan one that includes not only asphalt and culvert replacement but also equipment replacement and things like that so it's something our board can start looking at and put a plan together so we don't saddle that issue with a board um, 10 or 15 years down the road to have to scramble to find funds to keep up our system so hopefully we'll be seeing that in the next couple of months and we can start giving that some serious thought we will thank you mr Fassler. Terry, on the uh, fairview culvert there what is the time where are we at with that one of the uh, precast will be uh, ready to ship to us on September the 20th. Um, we will come probably on August the 20th, that weekend of August the 20th, we will that day close a section of Fairview down and put a detour in while we shift, make those tie-ins on that runaround road. So we'll put the traffic on the detour, say, on August the 21st. Uh, the pipes, the precast box culvert, we're going to do that as a precast. It comes in September the 20th. I would say it'll probably take us about a week to lay them um, and backfill, and then we'll have to pay the road back. So probably about two weeks after that, we'll be ready to open the road back up. Okay. Well, I sure appreciate that. And, and uh, what was on Leland, uh, Leland Cypress over there, uh, with that hammerhead for the citizens who live in Twin Oaks, I think that was a major deal because of the concern for the citizens there, the cut through it would be in. But uh, I sure appreciate all you do. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Right. Moving on in the agenda. Thank you, Terry. The next item is going to be under finance, a budget update. Our presenter is Mike Bush, finance director, and I believe you have a, an exhibit laying before you. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board. Um, this is our revenue report for the month of May. Um, June has ended, and, and normally in this time period we would be talking about our June, but June is the last year of the month, and bills that come in like the power bill for June won't be paid till July, so we can't really report on June until we have a chance to close it out for the end of the year. So we're going to show you May's today. Um, as far as the revenues go, um, we, are, we collected $4,754,105 in May. Last year we collected a little bit more than that um, in May. Uh, for the year we have collected $116,134,129. And same period last year we were at $112,585,279. Um, basically for the year um, we should have collected or generated 91% of the revenues. We've actually generated 92. Same point last year was 87%. Um, and we will need to collect $10,553,000 in June to generate the $126 million budget. I don't expect us to collect $10 million in June, but when I show you the expenditures, you'll see that it's going to be okay. For the expenditures, <clears throat> for the month we've spent 
9,808,522,000. For the year, for those 11 months, we've averaged spending 10 million a year or 10 million a month. Um, and so for the year, we've spent $116,130,333. I'm sorry, that's the budget. The actual, we've actually spent $110,554,591. So we've got $16 million left to, for, you know, if we spent the whole $16,133,046 in the month of June, then we would match our budget. But we're averaging $10 million a month, so I don't think we're going to hit the $126 million here either. So, which, that's a good thing. We're going to, where revenues and expenditures are going to be close. We're going to fall a little short on the revenues, which we budgeted $7 million of fund balance in this year. I do not believe we will use $7 million of fund balance. I believe we'll use less than that because of the, the um, instituting the, you know, only spending money that's absolutely necessary to spend, trying to control spending. And also, uh, you know, we've seen a little bit of an increase in our local option sales tax. I think for the year we're averaging about a 3% increase over last year. Same thing on our SPLOS dollars. Um, and which brings me to the final sheet um, that I have. It's talking about our SPLOS dollars. <clears throat> For the month of June, we collected um, two point, uh, $2.4 million, which brings us to $58,368,101. Um, on a, against a budget of 62,750, which we're at 93.2 percent. Just six months ago, we were at 92 percent, so we made a full percent up in six months. And we expect, again, like I said, we're averaging a three percent increase in this calendar year over last calendar year. Which, if we maintain that type of an increase, we will definitely surpass our 180 million dollar uh, budget that we've got. But again. It, it, you know, even in the hard times that we're in right now, we managed to pick up a full percentage point um, in the last six months on our, on our special purpose local option sales tax. I'll be glad to answer any questions if any of y'all have any. Any questions or comments? Mr. Yes, sir. Um, I guess about halfway up that list, June to July of last year, with the word that has the big drop in the percentage, it looks like there's like a zero for that month. Yes, sir. Um, state of Georgia changed the way that they were uh, reimbursing the counties. All the sales tax goes to the state and then they give it back to the counties. Well, they changed their way of giving the money back, um, our way of, of uh, gathering the money and giving it back. There used to be a two month delay in getting your money back. They have now got it to where it's a one month delay. And what they basically said is that we've given you the money and, and the money you got in May and June made up for one of those months, and that's why you see a zero collection on one of those months. That's why we went from 98% to 91%, but uh, they're still paying us for those time periods because what happens is if somebody sends in their money and it's different, the money they send in is different than the report, it has to go through an audit process, which means you may not get that money for six months. So although they say they're one month behind, it's really not completely one month behind. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Bush. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is under elections, resolution to provide for the calling of a special election for the purpose of submitting to the electors of Henry County for approval or rejection of an act, House Bill 1347, adopted by the General Assembly of the State of Georgia and approved by the Governor in the 2010 session of the General Assembly which act authorizes Henry County to exercise redevelopment powers conditioned upon voter approval. Our presenter is Janet Shelnut, Director of Elections, handout number one. Good morning. Good morning. This resolution is basically derived from House Bill 1347, local legislation that passed the Senate and the House. The Governor has signed it. We have gotten copies of it. Now we're kind of dotting our I's and crossing our T's. Um, it will be on a special referendum on the November ballot uh, for exercising redevelopment powers. Uh, you can see the language is on Exhibit A. Um, and basically, as superintendent of elections, I'm asking you to place it on the ballot. You have your permission. Then we'll send this to justice after, after today. So. Any questions or comments from board members? This has to do with the TAB legislation we had asked uh, the General Assembly to allow to be placed on our ballot in November for our voters to decide whether or not they wanted 
Henry County to have the authority to do that. So if there's no questions, you have a resolution before you uh, approving this, and I will entertain a motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Stamey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on under public safety, a resolution requesting authorization to use seized asset and forfeiture funds to purchase physical fitness equipment for the department's health and wellness program. Our presenter is Major Danny Butler of the Police Department, and that's exhibit number one. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chairman, Commissioners. The department would like authorization to use funds from the dr drug seized uh, and forfeiture account to purchase uh, physical fitness equipment for the health and wellness program. And this resolution. I did um, speak with the county attorney, and this item is not required to be bid because it is used equipment. Does any board member have a question or comment about this item? Just a question. Mr. Mr. Holder? Major Butler, where will this equipment be located for the fitness program? In our main building, we have a conference room that was used for the training division that we converted into a room to house over, all this. Over yes, at the complex. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, you have before you a resolution authorizing and approving the purchase of the physical fitness equipment for the police department. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Basler. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to social services, a resolution requesting approval of the FY 2011 Georgia Department of Transportation contract for 5311 Rural Transportation Operating Assistance Program. Our presenter is David Williamson, Transit Director, Exhibit Number 2. Good morning. Good morning. We do request approval of the uh, 2011 contract between the Georgia Department of Transportation and the county for the Rural Transit Program. Just as a matter of information, this is our 21st year providing transportation for the citizens of Henry County. In the past five years, we've almost doubled our one-way passenger trips, that is, individuals that ride each day. And over that same period of time, we have uh, had a 63% increase in our reimbursement from the, from the state for the rural transit program. The uh, county would be eligible for reimbursement up to $406,914 in uh, assistance from the state. And the local match is $406,913, which is in our uh, departmental budget. Any questions or comments pertaining to this item? If not, you have a resolution before you approving the contract with GDOT, and I'll entertain a motion. To motion to approve by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to building and development services, a resolution requesting approval of a street light district for Taylor's Landing at Spivey. Our presenter is Burt Foster of the Building Department, and that's exhibit number three. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Before you today is a street light request by the property owners of Taylor's Landing at Spivey. The requirements of the ordinance have been met, and staff recommends approval. All right, this lies in District 2, and if there are no questions from board members, I'll entertain a motion on the request. Motion to approve by Mr. Roark, second. second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to SPLOS, the first item is a resolution requesting awardable bid for copy services for construction plans and specifications. Our presenter is Rocky Romero, SPLOS Transportation Projects Director, Exhibit Number 4. Uh, good morning again, uh, Madam Chair and Board Members. Uh, so various county departments require copying services for construction plans and specifications. Having a contract for copying services allows a quick access to these services and products uh, without the necessity of bidding each time the services required. The prices are guaranteed for a two-year contract period. Seal bids were solicited for the copying service. Three seal bids were received and reviewed. Staff recommends the low bidder LDI of McDonough. Funding for copy services is available in each individual account. I will take any questions for this time. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? All right, if not, I would like to mention for the record that Mr. Bowman will be recusing himself from this vote as LDI rents a space in one of his commercial buildings. And with that being said, you have a resolution before you awarding the bid to LDI, and I will entertain a motion. Okay, motion to approve by Mr. Stamey. Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. <laughs> 
You also have the next item on the agenda, which is a resolution requesting approval of an agreement for professional engineering services for bridge culvert inspection and repair details and design for Flippin' Road at Pates Creek Bridge, and that's exhibit number five. This uh, Flippin' Road at Pates Creek uh, Bridge is a designated Splash 3 transportation project. Uh, this culvert is in need of a repair. Uh, one of the wings of the culverts uh, has completely separated from the box. So there's uh, the need for an inspection and a repair uh, for design. Uh, an agreement was received and reviewed from Heath and Lineback, and the staff recommends approval of this agreement in the amount of $33,180. And uh, funding is, uh, for these services is available within the project budget. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, the slide's in District 2, and I'll look to you, Mr. Roark, for approval of the resolution. So I move. Have a motion by Mr. Roark. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution requesting award of a bid for installation of trees along McDonough Parkway Extension. Again, this is uh, Rocky Romero as our presenter, exhibit number 6. Uh, McDonough Parkway Extension is a uh, designated Splash 3 transportation project. Seal bids were solicited uh, for the installation of the Leland Cypress trees and uh, Lollaby Pine trees along McDonough Parkway Extension. We received 10 seal bids uh, and we reviewed them. Staff recommends the low bidder, Rockland Contracting LLC from Conyers in the amount of $12,380. Are there funding, any funding is available within the project. Are there any questions or comments regarding this item? Madam Chair, I my question is, why would you use Loblolly Pines for, what, what's the purpose in, I mean, obviously Leland is a buffer tree. I guess to give a different contrast in the, in the, the buffer. Aesthetics, we're talking aesthetics, about aesthetics. Yes, aesthetics. Here. But a Loblolly Pine, is going, no, is, is, there's nothing, to, it'll just be a tree. And if there's any any cover, it's going to be the lowest at the top. If you're talking about it, but anyhow, I don't know what the purpose in the Loblolly is. We know what a Leland will do. I mean, it's just common sense. Mm -hmm. I think what we're doing, Mr. Holder, is this is an area that had a um, a buff area that was opened up when we put in the new parkway, and to protect the homeowners in Autumn Lake subdivision, we were required to go back. They requested us to do this, and we agreed to it. We actually talked about several different types of buffers, but. They wanted two layers, and we're putting the Leland's in front and the, and the pines behind pines this. There's a lot of pines that we took out down through there, but um, that's kind of what they came to terms with us wanting us to put in there. That's fine, but you're not going to get any um, any buffering from blah, 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 pine. Well, we'll have the Leland's in front of them. That's fine. Not just a question. Well, maybe the hope was that the pine straw would help keep the weeds down as the pines got larger. <laughs> Mr. Stane, did you have another comment? No, Rocky, I know we had talked about this and we you know, had several bidders on it, but can we push that there's a maintenance agreement in here too? Correct. We're in August. Can we wait 60 days before we put this in the ground that way we can probably do away with some of the maintenance part of it because it will be a much cooler environment? I don't know if we awarded. We I don't know if, if we're awarded now. I don't think we can. Can we wait? The question, Latanya, is can we? We can award it today. Just just postpone the starting date. We can issue the notice to proceed in time okay. after you do the award. Okay. So, so we, can, we can hold off on issuing the notice to proceed. Okay. So we'll give notice to proceed. We'll we'll let them know that they they received the award. But of course, if, if it's awarded, and uh, we'll provide except October. That's better. I just don't think they have much of a fighting chance if you put them in the ground in August. It's too hot now, yeah. Even though they do come with a guarantee, I think it would be better they did. in August. I mean, they did have a guarantee. Yeah. If there are no further questions for the, from the board, there's a resolution before you approving the award of the bid to Rockland Contracting. I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Stamey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Rowark. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution requesting approval of a supplemental agreement for roundabout lighting design for the intersection improvement of State Route 155 at Fairview Road. Again, Mr. Rocky Romero is our presenter, exhibit number seven. 
It's there at 155 at Fairview Road. It's a designated splotch to transportation project. Georgia Department of Transportation has required that a lighting light be installed at the proposed roundabout. Staff has re requested approval. Is, staff is requesting approval of this supplemental agreement in the amount of $2,400 for the lighting uh, design and funding is available in the, the budget. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Okay. Mr. Holder? And I promise you it'll be quick. I'm sure GDOT designed this roundabout, is that correct? Uh, we actually, URS is doing the design. URS is doing the design for, for us, the county. Uh, but G, that is going to be the one building, paying for the construction of this project. So, so it's going through the G dot process. A concern that I would have in, in with a roundabout, and especially on a state route such as this, is that the radiuses in this roundabout accommodate 53-foot tractor trailers and things that are going to have to maneuver that thing, and um, it's going to be quite a circle. And it, it will, and I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure the engineers will take that into consideration, but mm -hmm. it's something that's going to certainly need to be considered. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different from the, of course, you, you know, the roundabout that we have on, on Unity Grove, but uh, this is going to be different. It's going to have a concrete uh, layer in there for trucks to go around. So you're going to have a center that is going to be grass, just like uh, Unity Grove. But then you're going to have an, an outer, like an outer perimeter of it that is going to be concrete. So the trucks are basically going to be able to run over that concrete. They just, GDA just finished one on a stair route one, uh, 341. In G Monroe County. Monroe County. <laughs> I just, <laughs> that's, that's the one I was referring and, to. And that one has, if you looked at it, it's got that concrete. Um, before, it, yeah. before they design it completely, they need to go down and look and see how much concrete is broken where trucks are not maneuvering that, that circle. And that is exactly the reason for my comment, is that we need to get it right. And, and, and obviously, they need to look at the one in Monroe County. Okay. Because I don't think uh, with log trucks and any kind of large truck that they're making the turn and they're, they're breaking curves. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, just a thought. Okay, we'll, we'll check on it. Just a... A little comment for Commissioner Odom. We had met with D, uh, Georgia D DOT several times on this project. Uh, you know, they had told the citizens that we'd get a light during Squash 2. They've came back and they have uh, changed their mind. And uh, But in doing that, what they're doing, they're paying for the construction of it. So it did save the taxpayers' money of the county of not doing that. And, and that was some of the questions that I had. But I think it is Highway 5 and 166 is an interchange out in Douglas County. That is, it's, it's big. And it's a lot of truck traffic that is that has worked fine, worked fine. Yeah, and uh, and there was a lot of citizens that was apprehensive about it. Right, and I think it's something that we need to stay on top of. We don't feel like something is going like we need it, like it needs to be there. We need to, it needs to be brought to our attention. So, so the Monroe County one was brought to my attention. And I have seen it, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying it needs to be addressed now rather than later. Rocky, if you wouldn't mind, and keep me apprised on what how that goes. Uh, I do have a question about the light. Is it one center light in the middle that's a downward light? On that's it? correct. Okay, that's what I thought. Any other questions or comments? If not, you have before you a resolution approving the supplemental agreement for the roundabout lighting design. And Mr. Basler, I look to you for a motion. So moved, Chair. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Basler. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of the minutes, we're going to take these separately. Um, we're going to first of all take May the 27th, 28th, June 1st, and June the 22nd. There were some grammatical um, changes or errors in the May 28th on page 13 that I will um, give to the clerk. Are there any other additions or corrections to be made to the minutes? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve. So motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The June 24th meeting, Mr. Uh, Bowman was absent for that. Are there any additions or corrections to these minutes? If not, I'll entertain a motion. 
Motion to approve by Mr. Roark, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? The motion carries 4-0. We had no one sign up for public comment this morning. Mr. County Manager, any comments for public session? I just have one comment to make. You'll notice when Major Butler was here uh, about the purchase of the exercise equipment. Uh, fitness and wellness is an issue that you are going to hear more of. Um, we have had a $25,000 pool of money available from Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, which uh, we are going to utilize in this budget year to emphasize fitness and wellness. Um, it's an area that not only benefits individual employees, but it certainly has a long-term impact on our expenses in our group health insurance. Uh, that's been, been proven across the board. And uh, uh, I commend Keith Nichols for starting the program there. We are going to be putting together a countywide committee to utilize those funds the best way that we can, see what uh, our workforce is interested in uh, uh, doing to to work on wellness, and I think it uh, will have a long-term positive impact on productivity and cost savings. So you will hear more about that uh, that issue as time goes on. Thank you. Ms. County Attorney, anything for public session? No, ma'am. At this time, uh, because we have covered all agenda items for today and tomorrow, I need a motion to cancel tomorrow's meeting. So moved. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The upcoming meetings will be Monday, August 16th at 9 a.m. and Tuesday, August 17th at 6.30 p.m. These are both regular board meetings. Friday, September the 3rd is a county furlough day. All county offices will be closed. Monday, September the 6th, there will be no meeting. It's a Labor Day holiday. All county offices will be closed. Tuesday, September 7th at 9 a.m., this is the workshop meeting of the board. Um, I, I'm sorry, that is a regular board meeting. At this time, I need a motion to convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, personnel matters, or land acquisition. So motion by Mr. Stamey. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Basler. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Let me start. I need a motion for approval of an affidavit and resolution pertaining to executive session. So motion by Mr. Stamey. Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. At this time, we need to amend the agenda out of public necessity. Mr. Bowman. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Stockbridge to acquire 1.65 acres of land located on Rock Quarry Road for the purpose of constructing a fire station, a SPLOS 3 project, and authorize the chairman to execute any and all documents pertaining thereto with one change, and that's the start date of actual construction to be November 1 of 2010. And we have a motion by Mr. Bowman, a second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We also need to amend the agenda out of public necessity. Mr. Stamey? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve a right-of-way entry agreement with the Archland Properties 1 LLC for property located at Highway uh, 801 Highway 81 East, McDonough, Georgia, to authorize the chairman to execute all necessary documents. I have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Roark. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. If there's no further business to come before this board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Roark. Second by Mr. Basler. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We stand adjourned.